Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Auto X where we feature some pretty unusual vehicles from around the world. Right here is one we have never seen before. This is a Toyota Charm Pleasure Wagon based on a Toyota Granvia chassis. So there could not have been many of these made. It's the first one we've ever seen. Toyota made a few interesting campers back in the day in-house. Um, there was the cruising cabin, which was based on the high ace. Uh, there was the um, there was another one I can't remember based on a town ace and light ace truck camper. I'll put a photo of that here in the video for you guys. And then there was this, the pleasure wagon, charm pleasure wagon based on a 1996 Granvia. It's an all-wheel drive chassis powered by the 5VZ FE engine. So it's a gas-powered engine, puts out about 190 horsepower. This engine was pretty renowned and widely used on Toyota's lineup from the mid 90s to the mid 2000s. Uh, it's the same engine that powered, the V6 engine that powered the Tacomas all the way to 04, powered the third gen forerunners through 02. I think it was even in a few years of the first gen Tundra, um, Land Cruiser Prado, uh, the list goes on. I honestly can't remember all the vehicles that they use this engine in, but uh, long story short, super reliable, super sturdy engine. These have been known to go four or five, 600,000 miles uh, without too much fuss. They do need the timing belts changed routinely and of course the usual maintenance, but a very, very stout engine and quite uncommon to find in a Granvia. Most of these Granvias came with uh, smaller engines. A lot of them had the 1KZ turbo diesel, um, and then some also had the 2.7 liter gas engine. I think that's a 2RZ or the 3RZ engine. But this one's got the 5VZE FE, fuel injected 3.4 liter V6 engine. It has the Charm Pleasure Wagon high roof camping package from Toyota. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start taking a look around inside. This one's finished in a really nice two-tone, pretty common two-tone uh, blue and gray exterior. Uh, it's got a really nice cloth interior, <clears throat> which doesn't really show too much signs of wear and tear. Smells nice in here. Passenger side and driver airbags. It's a little bit more modern comforts as far as these Toyota vans go. Um, you know, the period correct floor mats and uh, this little fold down uh, center console, which is really cool. Um, the glove box was center mounted just because of the airbag here. Um, Armrest, captain's chairs, front and front left and right. Clean door card. This one does have a factory awning and the high top has its own two windows that pop out. Taking a look at the driver's side, really clean example. This one only has 79,000 kilometers, so that's about 49,000 miles original. It doesn't show too many signs of wear. Um, just a nice tidy rig, very unique little camping package. Hop in here. See if I can show you guys some of the interior. It 
basic cluster with attack, speedo, temp, and fuel gauge. This is an automatic A340F transmission, ubiquitous, strong transmission that, again, was used in a lot of those similar vehicles that had this engine. Automatic climate control, front and rear heat and AC. A double din aftermarket head unit sat nav from Japan. A little storage, I guess for your change and other thinner items. So let's go in the back. Another thing I want to point out is the factory Toyota rain visors, which is nice to have if you're camping. You can roll down the windows and not have any water intrusion. So walking around the exterior, you'll see the left side window up there. Down here is your, um, your AC power, and there's a cord inside so you can plug into your campground or shore power through this outlet here. Car presents really really nice and straight. There's a few imperfections and I want to point them out. There's a little bit of sun fading here on the upper edge. A little bit here. but it's a really straight body. There's no rust. The undercarriage is nice and tidy. The paint generally presents well. There's a few little rock chips and scratches that you would expect with the age, but a little scratch here, a few little scratches here. I'm not sure if you guys can see them. This is the Factory logo, it says Pleasure Wagon Charm by Toyota. So it is a factory Toyota camper. I bet most of you guys didn't know that Toyota even made factory campers when they stopped in the 90s. Which is too bad because these things are always fun and charming. So um, before I open up the rear hatch, there's again that same badge. Let's open up the sliding door, take a look at the passenger seating. So the middle bench is a split bench, 60-40, so you can seat three folks back here. Um, you've got your passenger-controlled heating, a voltmeter there for your coach battery, um, and your AC controls up there. This uh, seat back also has double purpose. So if you flick this little switch right here, or lever rather, you now have a little cubby storage cup holders on the back of this seat, which is kind of neat. Um, and then that just flops back up. Seats are on track, so they can go all the way back as far as you can see and they can come up as well so there's some versatility there a really cool luxury feature is these foot rests kind of like something you'd see on an upper class of a plane or a train they both fold down and you can rest your feet for the passengers nice little deluxe feature there i get a kick out of it So why don't we take a look inside. Factory curtains all around. These are nice, thick blackout curtains. So stepping into the rear, there is another rear bench, which not quite long enough to be a bed, but this does go into this position here. So you can kind of just extend this space a little bit for lounging, or if you want to sleep a small child or something like that, um, this all comes apart. Underneath here 
is where your some of your camping accessories live. You've got a 1500 watt inverter, your coach battery, you have a Webasto Airtop 2000 parking heater, which is really convenient. The controller for that Webasto is right here. And a few other things, including your power converter, so you can plug into shore power and some of the wiring for that. To my right is a tiny little galley. It's, um, it's got a sink and underneath, I'll show you. It's got a little drain going to your gray water tank. This is your shore power cord for the exterior. And here's some, um, some sun screens for your exterior window. It doesn't seem to be complete, so I would encourage someone, uh, this could use a faucet, which does not appear to be included, um, and a freshwater system, but that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Most of the components are existing. Again, there's curtains all around. These rear windows have been tinted. So you have a curtain for the back door, the side door, and the side windows, as well as these two. Okay, so now looking up top, I'm standing in here at about six feet tall, and there's definitely more than a foot above me, so I would say seven feet headroom. It is nice and tall in here. So right here is one cabinet which is very spacious. And there is a, another cabinet on the opposite side. Same idea. This is a hatch to the outside. This opens and hatches outward so you can get some fresh air just vented out. Kind of cool. Little shelf here. And then your upper bunk, you have one two windows which both pop out and hatch open. You have a tri-fold mattress which comes included. However, you could easily omit that if you want. And you have a really long bed which has an upper area which this is hinged so this could fold back to create more headroom here as you see. Um, this is another piece of wood with not exactly sure. Let's see if I can demonstrate this a little bit better. Well, you get the idea. There's an extra ladder there, which is preventing me from doing this with one hand, but it will flip over, do a somersault and then you'll have even more headroom for standing and walking on the interior. All right. You have a rear hatch, which you can exit from inside or out. And this acts as a nice rear awning as well. So if you wanted to camp out and do some cooking here in the rain or bad weather, Shouldn't be too hard to do that and stay dry. All right. Why don't we fire up the engine? Let me close up some of these things here. This has a factory Q 
key fob that remotely unlocks, which is a nice feature for 96. Engine fires right up. No surprises there. Why don't we take it for a little drive? That is your Japanese toll card reader, which speaks to you every time you turn on the van, reminding you that you do not have a toll card inserted, which is fine because we're not in Japan. Again, that can easily be uninstalled or unplugged. It's fun to leave them there just for some character. Mind you where this van came from. So with the 5VZE, it's got a real nice pickup. More than you would need in Japan, certainly. But it definitely makes for a really nice cruiser around North America where you really want that cruising speed so you can stretch its legs and really get it down the highway at a comfortable speed. It's a nice quiet van. The seating position is quite nice. A little bit more upright than you would expect from uh, a passenger car. So you have really good visibility um, out the front left and right. Um, underneath your foot on the pedal you feel like you've got a whole a lot of room for power uh, to pass and cruise and do really whatever you need to do down the road. The power is sent to all four wheels by Toyota's it was formerly known as an all as the all-track system. Uh, so it's uh, an all-wheel drive system with a viscous coupling, making it a very, very good system um, because it's essentially a mechanical all-wheel drive system. Um, the Previas of the 90s that were sold here have the same exact system, and it's known to be really, really stalwart in snowy conditions low traction situations, um, quite impressive, uh, much better than the electronically controlled or ABS controlled all-wheel drive systems that we saw getting put into vehicles in the mid-2000s and up. It's just, it's a night and day difference really. Um, they don't really make all-wheel drive systems like they used to and uh, short of being a proper 4x4 four four with the high and low range, this is really about as good as you're going to get. Um, so, I'm sure this thing could make it through all sorts of conditions and get you there safely. I want to go ahead and turn the air conditioning on. Set that to 22. blowing nice and cold.
The great thing about the 5VZ FE is that it is a North American familiar engine. So parts, engines, whatever you need to do with this thing, sourcing parts, having someone work on it is gonna be just that much easier. Um, these engines were sold in large, large numbers here. Um, and so many of them are still rolling around the roads and all sorts of Toyota. So that is a nice peace of mind that servicing this thing and keeping it going shouldn't be really too much of a hassle in North America. Nice power, cruise is real nice. Very quiet in here. Super easy to drive. If anyone's on the fence about right-hand drive, being scared about that, this is, come on down, test drive one of our vehicles and after five, 10 minutes, you'll feel super comfortable. All worries will be out the door. As always, thanks for watching these videos, guys. Really enjoyed making them. If you're interested in this 1996 Granvia charm wagon, check out our website, autox.com, O-T-T-O-E-X.com. And uh, stay tuned for more. Give us a call if you're interested. This one's now available for sale in Portland, Oregon.